optimization patterns. These patterns focus on improving the efficiency of a system, particularly in areas like performance, resource utilization, and response times. Caching. The process of storing frequently accessed data in a faster storage layer, such as memory, to improve performance and reduce the load on the underlying data source. You should cache data in references when the cost of fetching them is high, when they're read frequently but written infrequently, or as a means of improving responsiveness in performance critical areas. Caches are not free, they do require memory, which can create a bottleneck in resource constrained environments. An unused cache is simply wasteful. A cache can also become stale if not removed or updated. The caching process itself can also add complexity. Lazy load. The act of delaying retrieval of resources until they're needed. While lazy initialization is about delaying the creation of an object, lazy load is more about fetching or loading data, often from an external source, such as a database, a file, or a network request. This process can introduce latency at the point of first access. In distributed systems, lazy loading may delay error detection, as issues won't surface until access occurs. Read-through cache. A mechanism that ensures the application interacts only with the cache. If the requested data is not in the cache, it automatically fetches it from the data source, caches it, and returns it. Use this pattern for read-heavy systems, or when data retrieval and caching should be handled transparently. This pattern necessarily creates a dependency between the cache and its data source. If a cache is missed, it could add latency. Write behind cache. A mechanism that defers writes to the underlying data source, first writing to the cache and asynchronously updating the data source afterward. Use this to improve write performance for applications with high write throughput or when immediate consistency with the data source is not required. This pattern risks data loss if a crash occurs before updates are written to the data source, and thus may not be suitable for systems requiring real-time data accuracy. Micro-optimization patterns. These patterns deal with highly granular performance improvements, often addressing very specific aspects of a system's behavior. While these patterns can lead to performance gains, excessive micro-optimization can also lead to overly complex or hard-to-maintain code. These patterns typically focus on individual lines of code or specific operations to improve speed or reduce resource consumption at a very fine level. For instance, if you've ever multiplied by 0.5 instead of dividing by 2 because division is a more expensive process than multiplication. Object Recycling A way of reusing existing objects instead of creating new ones, thereby avoiding the cost of object creation and garbage collection. This pattern is widely used to maintain performance in systems where objects are frequently created and destroyed. Where object pooling focuses on maintaining a collection of multiple objects, recycling instead focuses on reusing a single object efficiently, even outside of a pool. The object is reset and reused by the same or another process. Recycling does not scale as well as object pooling for a large number of objects, and can lead to tight coupling if its reset logic is tied to the object's class. Data-Oriented Design A means of organizing data in memory to maximize cache efficiency and reduce latency. Instead of thinking in terms of objects, it organizes and processes data in large, contiguous chunks that CPUs can handle more efficiently. This approach is usually favored in so-called functional programming languages that deal mainly in verbs rather than nouns. It's highly compatible with the ECS pattern and is used in application where performance is critical, such as games and simulations with large numbers of entities, such as real-time fluids. Unity Engine has an entire workflow built around this pattern, with its Burst Compiler and Data-Oriented Technology Stack, or DOTS. This program can be extremely challenging for those who are used to working in object-oriented programming. Single Instruction Multiple Data, or SIMD. A process that allows a single CPU instruction to operate on multiple pieces of data simultaneously. This process works best on data structures like arrays and vectors, or where the same operation is applied to all elements. Imagine painting a large fence. We can use one brush to paint one plank at a time, or attach four brushes in parallel to one handle and paint four times as much in the same stroke. This works because all the planks will ultimately be painted the same way in the end. We're just speeding up the process. 
you can use this pattern for operations that are computationally expensive and need to be run in parallel, like physics simulations, AI, graphics such as compute shaders, or scenarios with heavy mathematical calculations that can benefit from vectorization, such as quaternion transformations. This process breaks down, however, if we have to rely on the CPU to make constant changes to our instructions, such that all elements are no longer treated the same way. Another major limitation is hardware support, as not all processors have equal SIMD capabilities, meaning your GPU. Setup is also more involved than most other patterns. If there are any design patterns you think we missed, let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you stay up to date when we release new content. If you'd like to learn more about programming and game design, click on the link appearing on your screen now, or see the description below for ways you can help support this channel. Thanks, and take care.